our um, our local river here. And along the way, there's going to be there are going to be two spots that we're going to cross over what's called Elwife Creek, and it's a small stream, um, probably large by Long Island standards. Back. And it's so it's actually named for these fish um, that you know people have relied on from um, from the Native Americans pretty much even through modern times. We work with uh, other organizations um, and weigh in on regulatory issues to um, one, um, reduce overfishing, but also one of the most critical things that we'll talk a little bit about is habitat and how even these, how these small streams, just one little tree fall in a stream can kill a run for a whole season. So these fish are extremely um, vulnerable. Do you monitor that? Yeah, we, we we monitor um, we monitor different streams, and the, the Southampton trustee maintenance crew they actually every spring prior to this run they park here and they put on waders and they actually walk the length of the stream oh, great. Um, and, and clear it out. So it's um, so it's it's pretty cool. And this this right here is actually um, as humble as it is. You think there'd be millions of people here. Um, this is actually Long Island's um, largest remaining current run of, of River Heron. It's right here. Smells like a skunk? I think that smells like a skunk. Anyone else? Well, right. <laughs> Come on, they're lying. It doesn't smell bad. So this is the large and mighty Elwife Creek, <laughs> which is um, what do you think about streams and rivers on Long Island? Uh, mm -hmm. There really, there really aren't very many of them. Um, this is one of the larger freshwater inputs into the Peconic Estuary. Uh, most notably, um, kind of the the name of the Peconic Estuary it, itself is fed by the Peconic River, which runs through Riverhead, and uh, that's that's pretty well known as the second largest run for river herring. What, what's the source of the fish? Uh, it's groundwater. We'll hang out here and watch for a few minutes and see if we see any moving through. This is what we're looking but, for, guys. But the, these are these are elwives or river herring. If you go back and you think about the Native Americans, maybe coming off of a really hard winter, or some of our earliest settlers in you know the 1600s in this area, earlier um, in other places further north. Um, if you can imagine coming off a winter, you know, pretty much near starving. And all of a sudden in the spring, your rivers and streams were, you know, literally when you literally choked with these fish. You always hear those stories where you could walk across the backs of the fish without getting your feet wet. Um, and you see some of these old pictures and that's really what it was like. So they could not only use them for food, but also fertilizer, livestock feed, fish bait. And it was, it was a reliable thing that happened every year. Um, the unfortunate reality is, uh, with with development, this this is just one example. This is actually part of this this creek. This is Elwife Creek. So, like I said, one of the largest remaining runs in Lo on Long Island. This is around the corner on North North uh, Noyak Road. Uh, there was a pipe culvert put in under the road. So when we put in a road, we need water to pass. Um, a lot of these projects were done without consideration for what. Um, what the ecological needs were and this is a shot I actually took a few years ago um, which I thought was pretty cool it's actually a fish fighting through but these aren't these aren't salmon they don't leap they need to swim up through something um, the good news is with this culvert there's a mark right there that's the high tide line and so at high tide the fish can actually pass through pretty well um, so that's why I kind of timed this with a little bit of a higher tide this morning um, the other good news is there's a current project. Um, these projects take a painfully long time to happen, <laughs> I've started to learn. But there is a project underway to actually replace this with a better culvert 
that will allow better water flow and um, mitigate this problem. So the fish can still get through here, um, but it is an opportunity um, for, it's really good for things like um, our predators. Uh, anyone seen any of these around? <laughs> so Osprey, when do you start seeing Osprey? Osprey. What? Middle, a couple of weeks ago. Middle of March, right? When do the herring start running through? Middle of March. So it's it's almost like to the day. It's like they know. they do at about three or four years old after being off the continental shelf way out in the Atlantic Ocean feeding on plankton they um, usually starting as early sometimes as late February they start heading into our coastal waters and they start to branch out at that point so the Long Island ones will come this way the southern ones will head head in a little bit earlier um, and this goes all the way up to New England and even up to Maritime Canada. So we're talking about a very wide range, um, wide ranging fish. And uh, they'll swim up to um, these freshwater bodies of water. Um, they'll hang out in here for a few days. They lay up to about 300 or so thousand eggs. Uh, the larvae, the, the small fish will stay in these ponds for a few months and then make the journey all the way back out. 